Hello everybody and welcome to Lindley Rider's channel. Today we're going to be working on the Z1000 and we bought a whole bunch of crap. Lindley Rider is not a professional mechanic and is not responsible for any personal injury or vehicle damage that may result from individuals attempting to repair shown in this video. You have been warned. Try it to your own risk. So we got a bunch of stuff here. What all do we got here? Well, let's see. We've got a GS6R 600 master cylinder, which is a common mod done on this bike. We're going to switch that around. Got some grips and we also got some new handlebars. I think they're one and a half inch risers. We're going to be putting these on as well. We also have some new tank protectors that we're going to be putting on as well. Now to begin this job, what we're going to have to do is you can see we don't have quite enough fork tube on the top of this triple clamp here for this to clamp onto. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to release these triple clamps here and we're going to have to lower the front end of the bike a little bit to give myself enough fork tube there to clamp these on. Now unfortunately in order to get to these bolts here and to get to these bolts here we're actually going to have to take the front end of the bike off. But don't worry it's not as horrible as it sounds. The first thing you're going to want to do is take those bolts off right there. That's the easy part. Now before you get started doing that you're going to want to put a cloth down on top of your fender so you don't scratch it all up. And those are 10 millimeters so go ahead and break those loose with a 10 millimeter wrench and go ahead and take them off. Okay, with those nuts off now we're going to go up top. Okay, now the bolts you have to get to up top here are underneath of this plastic piece. You're going to have to un unhook and remove that plastic piece. So that plastic piece is held on by these little plastic screws in here that you got to take out with a Phillips head screwdriver, one on this side and one on the other side in order to take the plastic piece off. And that's what they are right there. They're just one of those like automotive plastic clips. Now, believe it or not, it's easier to get this off by taking this cover off and actually taking your gauge off. I know it sounds a little silly, but if not, you could actually end up breaking this plastic piece in half. Now go ahead and unbolt your gauge. Now you'll see here, normally it's just these Phillips tip screws right here. Over here, this is something I had to rig up because the plastic inside there got stripped out, so I had to, I had to rig something to get it to hold. But basically, it should just be these, should just be these Phillips tip screws that are screwed into the plastic. There's three of them. One here, one here, and one down inside there. Now that you've got that unbolted, slide this rubber boot off here. There's a clip right there. Push that down with your thumb and unhook the speedometer. Set the speedometer carefully aside. Now after you've removed those plastic screws like I showed you, and now that you've got all this off, now you can pull this plastic piece off. It just pops right off. Now aside from those two plastic screws, really the only thing holding this on is just this plastic knob and that plastic knob sliding into those rubber boots right there. That's really all that holds this piece on. Now we can get to this screw and this screw. These are both 10 millimeters. Now with those two bolts out right there, this whole front end literally just lifts off the chassis. So the only thing holding the front end of this bike on are those two bolts right there and those two screws down inside there. That's the only thing holding the whole front end of the bike on. So this is actually another easy way if you ever got to take this off to be able to access your headlights, your turn signals, the wire harness in here, anything. It's just, it's really easy just to take those four bolts off and just pop the whole front end of the bike off. Now that we got the front end of the bike off, now we can access the screws and the triple clamps to loosen them and slide them down the fork tubes a little bit. Okay, now with the handlebars off, I'm gonna assume you know how to do that, it's easy. You just take those four bolts off and just take the holder off and just pop the whole handlebars off. With the handlebars off, these exposed, now what we're gonna do to keep because when you loosen those screws, it's going to want to go anywhere, whether down or up. If you have it off the front wheel, it's going to fall down. If you have it on the front wheel, it's going to go up. So to kind of keep it from getting out of control, we're going to put a jack underneath the front end of the bike, right underneath the headers there. And I'm going to not lift the bike up. I'm going to jack it so that the bike is just resting on the jack so that it's not just going to want to fall down to the floor. So we're going to just gently put some pressure on that so that when we loosen this, it's not going to get away from us. Now, like I said, when you loosen this, this weight of the bike is still kind of on the front. Even with the jack there, there's still some weight on it. So as soon as you go to loosen this, this is going to want to slide up. You don't want to let it get too far, and you're going to stop it. Okay? Now watch. Okay? Just tighten it back down again. Same thing with this side. See that? Don't let it go too far, and then tighten it back down again. 
Okay, now this is the easy way to do this. Now I purposefully gave myself way more fork tube than what I need. I'm gonna go ahead and put my clip-ons on. I'm gonna bolt them down where I want them. I'm gonna use them as stoppers. And then we're gonna jack the bike up, take the front wheel off the ground, and then we're gonna loosen these bolts again and let the weight of the front wheel pull the fork tubes down until they bottom out on the clip-ons and the clip-ons will act as a stopper and it will stop them both exactly where you want them and then you tighten the triple clamps down and then you're done. That's the easiest way to do it. You don't have to measure or anything like that. You just set them, use them as stoppers, you jack the bike up, you let the front wheel off the ground, you let the weight of the front wheel take them back down until, they, until your clip-ons bottom out on the triple clamps and then it's right where you want it to be. Now we're going to clamp these down. Don't worry about getting it set where you want angle wise or anything like that. You can change all that later. Right now we're just going to get them on. We're going to get them clamped down height wise where we want them on the tube. And then we're going to reset the fork tubes and you can adjust the handlebars later. So don't worry about where they're turned or anything like that. Just, just get them set where you want them on height. Tighten them down and we're just going to use them to reset the front end of the bike. Okay, I got my clip-ons on. I got them set right where I want them to be, right at the very top of the fork tube there, right up to the uh, red piece there. And I've got them clamped down on both sides to where I want. Okay, okay, we got the bike jacked up. The front wheel is off the ground a couple of inches. So now we're gonna go up here and we're gonna loosen these bolts on the fork tubes and we're gonna let the front end fall down to, our, to where we have it set. So it's even on both sides. I got the clip-ons where I want. I got the fork tubes where I want. Now what we gotta do is we gotta go through and we gotta tighten down the triple clamps. Four bolts here, the four bolts on that side. Then we're gonna put the front end of the bike back on. We're gonna tighten that all down. And then we're gonna start taking stuff off the stock handlebars and transferring them over to the new handlebars. Okay, now we're gonna take the front end of the bike and we're gonna pop it back up on its mounts real quick, but we're not gonna bolt it on because we might have to remove it again. So we're just, I'm just gonna sit it up here to get it off the fender and get it out of the way so it's not flopping around the whole time. We're gonna start with the bar tip mirrors. We're just gonna take those off. Next, we're actually gonna take the master cylinder off and the clutch lever because it actually makes it easier to get these plastic components off. Now the master cylinder is just two bolts, but remember you also have to unhook this electrical connection right here for your brake light. You have to unhook those or you might bend the tabs off. We're just going to let that hang out of the way for now. Okay, now we're going to take off these plastic components here and here. They're both held on with Phillips tip screws. And it just pops off like that. Now you need to unhook the cables from your stock cam. And there's your stock throttle tube. Now for these handlebars in particular, they come with this plastic plug that's stuck in there. And they are in there really tight. Pretty much the only way you're going to be able to get them off is to get a long tool, like a long flat tip screwdriver, slide it in from the other side all the way down, and then literally smack it out with a hammer. Them things are tough. Now what I like about these is that you don't have to use glue. They just set with set screws, which is nice because you can just set them, tighten them down. You don't have to mess with any glue or any of that nonsense. And so these also usually, when you get these aftermarket grips, they usually come with a couple of different cams. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare our stock cam to the ones that came in this package and find the closest equivalent. That looks too small. That looks pretty much perfect. So this is the cam you're going to want to use to replicate the stock throttle. Now you want to make sure you get this throttle cam placed on correctly. You don't want to get it you don't want to get it backwards like that. So you want to hold it up to your other one and make sure that your installing it the right way and that's the correct way right there and we're going to slide our left grip on first and then we're going to install the holders for our bar tip mirrors now most of them come with all different kinds of adapters to fit all different sizes of handlebars in this case this spreader is too big so this is the next size smaller so i got to tighten that down to expand that inside to lock it in the handlebar It's on there pretty good. Okay, we got the grips on, we got the mirrors on. We're gonna tighten down this grip with the set screws 
and then we're going to start to see where we want to put our plastics and then I might have to drill a hole and then we're going to see where we're going to put our levers. Now I just tightened those for now to get everything back together but what I'm eventually going to do is I'm going to take those set screws back out I'm going to put some Loctite on them, some thread locker and put them back in but I just tightened them for now just to get everything together. Now you saw on these handlebars there is a hole drilled okay and that's a placement hole and there's a little plastic pin on these plastic connectors that is actually supposed to seat in that hole and that's to keep it from sliding around and spinning around on you because these are just plastic so you can't really tighten the screws too much or you'll crack the plastic it's not really meant to it's not really meant to kind of clamp on there these are just meant to kind of sit on there and the screws are just meant to kind of keep it clipped together so so you're probably going to want to get a step drill bit and dr drill those holes and it looks like it is a Looks like it's almost a 730 seconds. Okay, so that's about where I'm going to want this to be. So I'm going to want to drill my hole probably right in here. So I'm going to drill the hole in the bars to put the plastic piece right here. And that little plastic pin is about right in the center of this piece. So I'm going to want to drill the hole about right there. So I'm going to measure. I'm going to measure and I'm going to drill. Now we're going to do a test fit. And it fits in that hole just fine. That's it. Now we got to spin the handlebar back around and replicate the same thing on the other side. Now for this side, when you're checking this, you don't want to do this. This has to be inside this plastic piece, so you want to make sure that it's inside its proper seat so you get an accurate measurement. You don't want this, you want this. And then go ahead and find your spot and we're going to drill another hole. Hardest part about this is getting it started. Once you get it started, you're good. And there it is. That's where we want it. Now that we got our holes drilled, we can return the plastic components, hook our throttle and our electrical systems back up again, and then we'll move on to our levers. We're going to do the throttle first because it's the trickiest. Now because we made the handlebar shorter, we have too much cable and too much wire here up, up top in order to get these to fit. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to pull the front end of the bike off again, fish some of this line back down inside there and put it back on so that it's, it shortens everything up a little bit. Now that we've got the front end back off, it'll make it easier for hooking all these things up. Okay, now reinstalling the throttle cabling can be very frustrating. So I'm going to show you the simplest way to do this. Okay, you have two cables. You have a longer one and a shorter one with a plastic piece on it, okay? Now, the shorter one with the plastic component goes on the right side. Go ahead and thread it in there. The longer one goes on the left side if you're looking at it from the top. After you got the cables on the cam like this, the easiest thing to do first is go ahead and slide the cam inside the, the component that has the kill switch on it first, like that, and then thread the cables up afterwards. So this longer cable goes down inside that groove first, and it slides into position, and then the one with the plastic component that has that little, has that little notch right there, it slides in afterwards right beside it and you want to make sure that the cable is inside the groove in this plastic piece right there and it goes in like that now again the easiest thing to do here is hold hold this one in with your left hand your left index finger hold that down then take the uh, plastic piece on the right side with your right hand and slide it into position holding it all together or it will get away from you After you get them on together, then you gotta spin it around until you find the hole that you drilled. Should be right there. There it is. Now install your screws, and the most frustrating part is done. Now after you get that back together, you're gonna go ahead and do a test on your throttle to make sure it slides back and forth and doesn't get stuck or get bound up or anything. And in my case, mine is, is turning just fine, so I don't need to do any kind of adjustment. Now it's on to the other side. Okay, so the choke cable slides inside there like that. And then you're going to want to take this part, feed it back into your, uh, your lever, and then slide the lever down inside there. That's how it's supposed to go. 
like that. And then take it from there, and go ahead and put this side on the handlebar because this one is the one that has the plastic pit. Go ahead and stick that on first. And then take the side with all the electrical connections and put it on from the other side. That's the easiest way to do this one. And then go ahead and tighten down the screws. Now go ahead and make sure your choke lever works, which it does. Now we're ready to start putting the levers back on. Okay, now I was going to do the GSXR master cylinder mod right now, switching it out with this while doing this, but this job's taking a little longer than I expected, and I got some other stuff I got to do today. So what I'm going to do probably for now is just leave the stock master cylinder on and bolt this all down and get this all together, and then some other day I'll finish this video and I'll do the GSXR master cylinder mod, swap those out. But for now, I'm just going to put this one back on and reassemble everything and call it a day because it's taking a lot longer than I suspected. And we got everything on and bolted down we can still adjust kind of left right tilt this way we can we can do all that adjustment after the fact now we got to run these rerun some of these extra cabling and lines kind of find out where we can stuff them down in and put the front end of the bike back on well there it is there's the finished product i got my new tank pads on i got my new grips on my new handlebars and everything on the only thing left to change is the actual master cylinder i just put this back on because i needed the bike to be functional for the next couple of days i had a ride plan with a friend so i needed that i just needed it to be functional so i didn't change this yet so this still needs to be changed but everything else is done i'm going to show you how i did this here so basically with the clip-ons being up here so much it made everything really tight up here so i had to rerun a bunch of things because it got really really tight so for example the clutch cable i had to actually run down around back through here or right underneath the tachometer in order for that to work properly the throttle cables were the hardest because they're a little long so without getting shorter cables instead of normally they run down through here but in this case i actually had to run them underneath the shield that bolts on right here and run them right behind the speedometer and down through here otherwise when i tried to run them through here they were on too much of a, of a bind on a bend and the throttle cable would not spring back to zero position which is dangerous so i had to rerun those down here in the front behind there which makes it a little irritating because then you got to take the throttle cables off if you want to pull the front end off but there was no other way to make it work with these handlebars and the brake line i had to actually run around the bikini fairing and the front to come up here because it just could not come up through here but that's going to change because our gsxr master cylinder which is also going to mount right here the input for the brake line instead of coming out through this way it goes in through that way so i'm hoping i can take the brake line and i can run it back out through up here like it's supposed to and just go in straight this way with it at least that's my hope another thing i had to do to buy myself some space was i actually had to cut off this small bracket here this bracket normally is mounted underneath there like that and it's intended for you to run cables and wires through as like a holder but because we re-ran everything it just got in the way so i had to get my grinder out and just zip that off so i had to remove that it's not it's not imperative to the integrity of the bike it's not dangerous or anything it was just a little bracket but i had to actually cut that off and then file off the tips so that they weren't sharp it wouldn't cut through any of my wires or anything so i had to take that off as well so today we're going to do the GSXR master cylinder mod. Now, there's a couple different variations of this mod, but one of the common master cylinders that's that's uh, chosen for this modification is the 2001 to the 2003, I believe, GSXR 600 or 750 master cylinder. And the reason for that is, I don't know if you can see this, but because my levers are still on, but the the piston mechanism down in there and the lever mechanism is identical to the Z1000 first gen master cylinder. So the levers and everything are re completely reusable. They're a direct swap. So if you've already bought really nice custom levers and you don't want to have to buy another set of new ones, this is the master cylinder that most people buy because you can just use the levers you already have. But I do not like the, uh, the stock reservoir. I don't like the white plastic and I don't like those I don't like the the uh, reservoir socks so i got online and i bought a nice smoked reservoir with a smoked plastic look it'll look a lot better than that so we're gonna swap this we're gonna drain there's still brake fluid in it it was shipped that way from ebay can you believe that so we're gonna drain all that we're gonna swap the lines we're gonna swap the mounting bolts and everything so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the lever 
See what I mean? The mechanisms are identical. Now before you take this bracket off, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and break this loose. Don't, don't unscrew it all the way or you get fluid everywhere, but just, just break it loose so it's not so tight before you take that bracket off. Then go ahead and take the bracket the rest of the way off. Now go ahead and unhook the electrical lines right there. Okay, so there's the stock master cylinder. So now we're going to unhook the brake line and obviously we're gonna get brake fluid everywhere. So I got a, something here to catch it in. And then we're going to swap the master cylinders over. We're gonna refill the reservoir with fluid and we're gonna to have to bleed the brakes to get the air that we're inevitably gonna create in the system. We gotta bleed the brakes to get the air bubbles all the way down out and then we're gonna bleed it from there over to the other side. Before we get started on that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna unhook this old line here and drain everything out into my container. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my new line and my new reservoir cup before I go taking all that apart and making a mess. And there we are, a new line and a new reservoir. I'll worry about the bracket and everything later. Unfortunately, I didn't realize until I started this video that I'm out of rubber gloves, so I have to do it barehanded today. So what we're going to do is we're going to mount it to the handlebar first, and then we're going to find out how we can position the brake line and how I can reroute it to hook it up correctly. Don't forget to hook up the electrical lines. Now we're going to hook up the brake line. Okay, now with the brake line on, we're going to put the lever back on, and then we're going to secure the reservoir, and then we're going to fill everything full of fluid, and we're going to bleed the brakes. Now what I like about this reservoir cup is they didn't just send you a single bracket like a lot of ones do when you have to kind of fabricate something yourself. They also sent you a little adapter to change it to a 90 degree angle, which is really useful because for example, I have to use this bolt right here and I can't just go straight from there to there without twisting a piece of steel and this by itself isn't gonna, isn't gonna mesh to that in any way. But with this 90 degree adapter, I can bolt this to this like that and then I can bolt that to that, and then I can just bolt it right to the reservoir like that. So that's, that is really nice to have some options sent with the reservoir itself. Now anytime I do brakes, I rigged up my own little, my own little hose with a little clamp there on the end to put on the, uh, on the valve just for my own sanity, and then I'm just gonna just tape this hose down into the little can I'm going to use there and we're going to put our wrench on that valve and we're going to open and close it when we bleed the brakes. I'm sure you are familiar with the process, but if not, I'll walk you through it the first couple of times on camera and then you'll know the basics of how to bleed a brake system. Okay, now the process of bleeding your brakes is really pretty simple. You get your wrench on the valve there so that you can close and open it easily with one hand and then you fill up your reservoir with fluid Okay, and then you, with your left hand, see if I can get a camera shot of this, with your left hand, you simply squeeze the front brake with the valve open. So you open the valve, squeeze the front brake, and hold it down. And then while holding it down, you close the valve. And you simply repeat that process, and that will gradually force the fluid down through the system bleeding out the old and getting any air bubbles out of it and bringing in fresh fluid from the reservoir. As you do this and you notice your reservoir level getting low, you will stop, refill it, and keep going. And that's pretty much all there is to it. See it's pushing the fluid out. Now close it. Release the lever. 
open it, lever down, close it. And you're just gonna keep repeating that process. And then when you're done here, you're gonna open up the valve on the other caliper to bleed the line going from this caliper over the wheel to the other caliper in the exact same fashion, the same process. There it is, and that's it. Brakes are bled, reservoir is filled, master cylinder seems to be working, no leaks around where the master cylinder hooks up to the brake line or anything, and we have pressure. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reassemble everything, and we're gonna take the bike out for a spin, test drive it, make sure that the brakes work, make sure all your electrical systems and everything work, make sure that you didn't miss anything, and then that's it. Well, there she is, there's the finished product. I definitely like that look a lot better. It's a lot more aggressive. It is further down than the stock handlebars, but it's not as far down as a super sport bike, but it still gives it more of that almost a cafe racer kind of look. You know, one thing I will say for Kawasaki, again, I'm more of a Suzuki fan than Kawasaki. I just kind of happened upon this bike because it was a good deal. And I gotta say, this bike was definitely ahead of its time in terms of styling. I mean, it's it's a very sharp looking bike, even by today's standards. I mean, if you park it beside a modern day uh, sport bike, it uh, doesn't look dated at all. It blends right in. But yeah, it's pretty sweet. These LEDs here, these are super bright LEDs. Um, if you have trouble on Amazon with getting LEDs that are just really dim and you can't hardly see them at all in the daytime, these are much, much brighter. I had the same problem and I switched to these and these are really bright. I will actually show you a comparison video that I made when I switched to these. I'll show that video here now. Well, that's it for this video. We did the clip-on handlebars. We did the grips. I put new tank protectors on, which I think look a lot nicer. We did the GSXR 600 or 750 master cylinder. I did an aftermarket smoked plastic reservoir on it. And uh, the setup looks pretty sweet. I'm going to take it out for a ride now, make sure my front brakes are working normally. And then that's pretty much it. Catch you guys later.